to those whose home is not in me. As a child, I would bend and stuff every stone and rock on the path into my soon falling pant pockets. They were rubies and garnets and diamonds of the gloriously mundane river walk. I loved every single one of those stones. As I grew, I found sediment in the eyes of those who met mine, their hearts beating in pumice, their veins slowing in the well-worn ravine of their bones, these human geodes of I fucking love you. I saw their sparkle, and when they cried, their colors blended beautifully like a tumbled being on the bank, washed and vibrant in feeling. As a child, I would lift these beings from the path I walked, and I'd place them lovingly into my heart. I collected them all, the lost and the rambling and broken and the beautiful, until my heart was heavy with the love I carried, the human gems that I saved. It makes me wonder about the witches that sunk themselves with stone, how the magic of being too laden with life and love can be in the end, the very end of life and love. I see now that the beauty I witness on my path isn't mine to carry. The wonders of the world are left to be seen by many. The gems of life to be unmined and harnessed, left wild and free. Love being the sharpest gem of them all is meant to be free. This letter is to the gems that I see but have no right to own. The way the light is captured in your iris and how imagination projects rainbows onto my path is magic manifest to those that have shared sacred moments of my humanness and loved me anyway. The love I feel for you pours messily from my veins, a bleeding, cleansing love. It's chaotic, and I want to wear the gem of your you in a silver band, a till death do us part kind of love, but I have no, I have learned my lesson, and I know that I can't honor the gem that you are by marrying all of those that I love. There are far too many of you, and so few fingers on my left hand. But I love you all the same. That is what is important here. There's no game. I see you and I value you and I want you to find the home that your soul doth crave. So I refuse to pick you up and put you in my pocket. I refuse to capture you in ornate gold. I refuse to own you. That is how I love you in a way that holds you without cutting off the magic that made me love you in the first place. Hello, so welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes, Crystal. Um, I'm Swan and this is our little studio here reality abuser <laughs> and yeah i have some questions for you because i think you're an interesting person i saw you in town mm -hmm. i'm new to town so anything that strikes my eye i have to really engage to learn totally. because that's the purpose of this whole thing mm -hmm. curious about you to begin with i really wanted to talk to you about like where do you find like poetry like in like in modern times, I'm gonna say it like super old because I see that you do poetry, obviously. Yeah, yeah. When I'm not to say it's like expired, but I just don't see it as much as I used to, or maybe it's like, yeah. maybe I never saw it that much, but I just have to notice it when you're publishing it on social media uh -huh. or in public. Yeah. So you're asking like, where do you find like where do you find poetry? In, in it, to yeah, as, as, a, as an art form. Um, I like so I discovered poetry, which I think a lot of. Um, women in my generation did uh, because of Rupi Carr. She posted, a, uh, she published a book, um, Milk and Honey, and yeah. it blew up and it, you know, made mm -hmm. a huge difference. Um, as far as where, like, an, a general person will find poetry, it's one of those things that um, you might find it at an open mic night. Um, there's obviously poetry books you're going to find at a, a store or at a library, but it's um, until you have a friend that's doing it or somebody who's touched by it, um, it does kind of stay in the wings and it's an art form that you have to look for because it is very dense and it asks us to feel and be present in a way that this world doesn't usually facilitate and so a lot of us are looking for distraction you can find poetry on social media but like we were talking before yeah. um, you have to look for it mm -hmm. because the purpose for a lot of people in the mindless scroll is to not feel is to not think and not like dwell on the reality of their world so um, you have to ask for it if you want to experience cool. it yeah. Nice. You're the first person I think I've seen do reels, like with the actually poetry, mm. like the, the actual like lyrical content, mm -hmm. like on the on the thing. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. But then again, who inspires you? Anyone contemporary, like that, like maybe does what you do as well? Yeah. Or... Um, there's a new poet, Whitney Hansen. Mm -hmm. She does a very similar thing with her like reels and like how she markets her her work. I think she blew up on TikTok is how she like got her um, following. But um, as for contemporary 
poets, I love uh, Yana Robinson. She's mm -hmm. a Canadian poet. She uh, wrote the book, This is for Women Who Don't Give a Fuck. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal, fiery woman. Um, and then the Brooke Solis is her Instagram, Brooke Solis. She um, has a, a whole group, like a collection of poetry books for every zodiac sign. Yeah. And she wrote a book um, for artists. It's one of my favorite poetry books I've ever read. It's more prose. But um, both those, all of those women, they're very fiery and here to speak their truth, which I think is um, important. Okay, and how would you condense, how would you summarize your truth? Oh, that's... Um, not an easy question. Not an easy question. <laughs> um, no, know, you want to read the books? Because that's kind of... Um, I think when you condense your truth, it can get a little too um, vague. Um, I think to live in truth and express your truth has to do with um, presence. Yeah. And with artwork or just living. Yeah. Um, you have to give yourself permission to choose in the moment. Okay. You know, so your truth isn't something that can, it's not like a, <laughs> a statement or a manifesto. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, Maybe not so static, right? It's, yeah, 100%. Very, okay. like... It is as evolving and changing and growing as you are. And I hope we all are doing that, growing oh, and evolving yeah. and changing. It's like a verb, not a noun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I also saw some of your visual artwork, mm -hmm. which I feel like is more specified, at least from what I've seen. I feel like it has an, ero uh, not an erotic kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah, that could be said. Um, I really love the female form. Mm -hmm. And um, I... Grew up here in the Sierras, so I also use a lot of like natural tones. I love mountain ranges. Um, my work since I was a kid has always been very um, abstract in in the melding of the two of like yeah. humans and nature. And yeah, there's definitely that could definitely be said. I've definitely painted, and there's some poetry out there too that's uh, very erotic. And I think um, in that a lot of most of my work, I aim to empower people and. It's great when you have a poem, like I have a whole book called I Hope, and it's like just happy. You know, there's some things that kind of dive into the nitty gritty of it, but it's just like, oh, that felt good. It's like some yeah. sunshine on your face. Um, but we don't always, like there needs to be just as much witnessing and expression of the things we fear and the things that we're not sure about, or like there's so many different ways I could say it. Um, when I paint or draw, in the nude, I think that is, in essence, like, we're scared to be naked. We're mm -hmm. scared to be vulnerable. We're scared to be intimate. And yeah. so that's a little baby revolution of maybe I can be seen in my totality, in, in my, like, in all that I am, the shadow, the fucked up stuff, the beautiful things, whatever it is, and be loved. That's really cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, like, you do this mainly, like, how much of time just do you actually, like, take out of the day to write material and do all this art and, and stuff? It's my whole life right now. Um, yeah. So even if I'm not creating, I'm um, meeting up with creatives. I'm um, networking. Um, there's I don't take a lot of, like, there's not a lot of separation, which might be something that could be beneficial to the process eventually. Um, I'd say... It comes in waves, and that's why I do so many different things because people deal with writer's block and um, you know creative blocks, and yeah. I don't want to have to experience the that lull um, in my business. So there's some days like two weeks ago, I had a really big emotional event, and I wrote for five hours straight. I didn't leave my computer. I wrote like 50 poems and like. 40 of them I loved and it was a very productive moment when I started writing I hope um, it was a very similar like just like flow drop in I wrote for like five hours straight got 8,000 words on the page and I was like that's gonna be a book that's amazing and then there's times where I'm like I'm not even inspired to write I sit down to write and yeah. there's nothing on the page so maybe I'll doodle and I'll start working yeah. on my gesture drawings or whatever it is yeah. so it's not as structured as like I have to do this much every day but when I lay down at night I want to be like what did I create 
Did yeah. I create a connection? Did I create artwork? Mm -hmm. Did I create an idea? Cool. And if I did that, I can give myself the permission to be like, I, I did enough today, you know? Okay, so do you believe in astrology? Do you think any of this comes with that, like your energy or your sign or stuff like that? I do believe in astrology. I think um, I have a whole like back burner project that I would love um, to dive into more in the future where I would love, like I think astrology, human design, all of these things are stories. Yeah. And we're stories. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to be introduced to who you are in a way that's empowering, yeah. right? I remember when I was a kid and I was learning, like, my sun sign, I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. So I learned this and I, like, learned everything I could about what it means to be a Capricorn. Yeah. And then I, like, looked up my tree sign and all the things, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but in essence, like, in the very scientific, like, not believing in the spiritual aspect of astrology, it gives people a story that makes them feel powerful. Mm -hmm. Like I can leverage these things that make me up mm -hmm. and become something that I can be proud of. And then on the other side of that, I do I do believe in um, the energetic pull and change in astrology and I do follow it. Um, but on a very cursory level, I think it's very important for us to have a story that makes us feel big because yeah. when you feel big you can do big things so mm -hmm. like i'm a capricorn mm -hmm. and they are strong and they're leaders and they do all these things and i had a very loving household but if i hadn't and i learned i was a capricorn and capricorns are strong and they're leaders maybe that would have given me some of the fuel i needed to transform from where i came from to where i am today you know okay cool so what do you prefer? Do you prefer to work at a communal, like community level, or mm -hmm. do you try to speak like to the world? Like I know that's a weird question, but um, like when you do art, do you think in like like you really like want to be in the community, or do you think like oh, I want to really expand my work. I want to, I want it to fall on as many ears as possible. Um, I think both. I, I don't think I could choose either side. I think cultivating um, real connection and community is super important, something that's not talked about a lot in how to run a business. Because when you're an artist, like you can, you don't have to sell it to be an artist. Yeah. But if you want to pay yourself and, and be fed on your art, then you have to be a business owner too. Yeah. And on that side of things, um, before social media and all of that, like you, it was word of mouth. And yeah. it was shaking hands, and it mm -hmm. was a really genuine smile, and like mm -hmm. a five second uh, like conversation that made somebody feel seen and met. Yeah. And then you wanted to support that person because you believed in what they're doing because they gave you a good feeling. So I yeah. think that's super important. Um, I love Reno. I love um, the community here is amazing. And mm -hmm. if it weren't for the community here, I probably wouldn't have had the um, the belief in myself that I could do this. Yeah. And then. On top of that, it would be amazing if more people could hear my work. It'd be amazing if I had an audience that um, was expanded because then I'd get to grow that community that I get to connect with. Even if it's for a five second communication on social media, I would be able to grow and expand as a business owner and hopefully make more people feel good, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like most of the time you're speaking just to like a certain group of people though? Mm, I've noticed from like being out audience. here, just someone to comment this, like, mm -hmm. I feel, I mean, this town's mixed, but I, since I feel like Burning Man's, like, right there, I feel like we get a lot of, like, burner people, mm -hmm. not burner, like, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound, you know, like, offensive or something, but yeah, yeah. like, that's what I, that, when I see someone who goes to Burning Man, I'm like, oh, that's a whoops. I'm cool with the whooks, you know, I get down with the whoops, you know, they're my yeah, friends, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. But it's just like, I don't know, like, bohemian, more, yeah. is a better way to say it, but I'd say whoops is funny. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, um... That's funny. I um I was I born and raised here in Reno, so I think um maybe that's just like like, like, like that's just what people are, right? Like, yeah. Um, but I think my audience for so for my poetry specifically, I'm my audience. Yeah. I don't like when my stuff is good because there's mm -hmm. I guarantee I can tell you there's thousands and thousands of poems that are not good and nobody will ever hear them. Okay. Those <laughs> like that's just how that's that happens. There's a lot, you know. <laughs> Yeah, like little thoughts and things, things that weren't yeah. finished, you know, books that never got um, edited or like whatever it is, you yeah, know, things so, that yeah, I was so, like, yeah. oh, I love that. And then two weeks later, I wrote something better and it just didn't come out. Yeah. Um, but when I write poetry, I write poetry because it's true for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my audience could, like you could by extension say my audience are people like me, people. And in that, um, in the human experience, I know that I'm like most of 
the people out there. Like I have experienced profound loss. I've experienced profound joy. I've experienced love and falling out of love and being left and um, wanting hope so bad, like just wanting to remember that there's a sun out there, even in the coldest part of winter, that like it's gonna get warm again. Yeah. Like all of those emotional things, even if I'm like a white woman with red hair, or, like I grew up in Reno, whatever you want to categorize me, like yeah. that's a very small box when poetry and the emotive side of poetry has a very wide range. So, yeah. You know and what I mean? I get that vibe. Yeah. You seem pretty eclectic. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that I means even being here, because I'm not necessarily in that crowd either, or this crowd, but I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can already get that vibe. Okay, right. and anything like so, the, the general mood overall, I know you have a variety of like moods you go through when you're <laughs> yeah. you're producing content, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I mean like if I were to if I were to say like from this spectrum to this spectrum like okay, is it more comedy or more or, or more horror? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that's like that's a really of, weird. Like, do you want me to go on that spectrum? Not really do. Yeah, okay. Not um, really do. Because <laughs> even if it's not even what you do, maybe, I know you probably yeah. don't do too much horror from what I've seen, or maybe you do have a yeah. hint of horror here. I actually do because um, <laughs> I model and I act some as well. And yeah. my biggest, like, as an actress, I just I'll be I'll have made it if I get to be in a scary movie. I love horror. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> there's that in the, just like my personality I guess yeah. I do love horror um, it, my creative process ah, Lord, I just... <laughs> it's just whatever I imagine whatever you're going through you kind of like... yeah I would say my paintings um, are the highest to, like towards the comedy like yeah, the joy yeah, 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 yeah. than any of the other things because when I paint it's um, almost like a craft rather than an art like yeah. I know what like the mechanics of it and I know like the feeling I want to produce and I and I make that happen and most yeah. of my paintings are very happy mm -hmm. um, maybe not quite comedic <laughs> but happy joyful um, light-hearted and then um, my drawings my black and white drawings I would say are like mid to like edging closer to the horror because they are like they lack color sometimes they're a little like yeah. unnerving to look at um and those ones i actually like i draw the most when i'm anxious um it's like i use repetitive designs uh, to like help with social anxiety and then um my poetry is def it gets a little darker but the, there's a range there's a range there because i do yeah, write really cool. happy poetry maybe with, but... maybe with also like visual art you might produce one more of this kind of vibe where maybe mm -hmm. the poetry is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay, so another thing, like, do you follow pop culture much or does that even, like, intrigue you at all? I know, like, like, I, I'm i not into pop culture either, yeah. but I still know basic, like, things going on. Like, I don't know, like, does that go completely over your head or is it just, like, you know, like, fuck that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some things you can't miss in pop culture. I definitely don't follow it and yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I watch <laughs> Stranger Things. That was great. Yeah, that's pop culture. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that, you know? Um, but I don't, like, I don't use Twitter <laughs> properly, and I, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I remember yeah. the other day I went, um, my little brother's girlfriend was over, and she was like, let me give you the tea. And I was like, gosh, I feel old. That's crazy. Sure. Like, let me, tell me all the drama. And I was like, not even remotely yeah, on in yeah. my realm. I was like, that's cool. Um, I try my best not to... Uh, so was there like a point where you're just like, but were you ever like super mainstream, like super just like, you know, like super like normal, I guess, let's say. Normal in a yeah, sense. No, no, I like, know what you, like, yeah, just like, yeah, like, like, like a fan, like, like a, <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah, um, I really liked High School Musical when they were coming out, <laughs> you know, I had posters of Troy Bolton on my but wall. Like, uh, but when did you get kind of like, like you started kind of making it more of an identity with your with your artwork and your creation and well stuff as far like as like identity goes um in high school i um i started listening to classic rock yeah. my um i lost my dad when i was young and i like revisited it because that's what he liked to listen yeah, to yeah. and at that point i was identifying as somebody who didn't listen to like popular music okay so i, I think that might be like the starting point of that yeah. like i'm i'm different or whatever <laughs> um and but like i didn't start identifying as an artist in the way that i do now until um like a year and a half ago okay yeah cool that's what's up yeah and like Another thing too, I wanted to ask you: Are you? What do you think about our veganism? Veganism, um, I think it is revolutionary. Yeah. And people who are willing to uh, sacrifice 
some of the like oftentimes some of their physical needs mm-hmm. um definitely like choosing it's like it's hard to choose a, such a, a secular group you know what i mean like yeah. you feel very included when you're with your people and very not included when you're not with your people um there's a lot to be said for the benefits of it for the collective though for like for um the planet if you're doing it correctly you know there's some vegans that don't like it's you're still using processed foods and you're hurting your body and the planet but people who do it for the social cultural like reasons that they're doing it i think it's amazing and if more of us had like we could be vegans four days a week or whatever we'd probably make a really big impact on the planet and that's important if we want to you know continue to be on this planet cool yeah. well we're starting to wrap it up here i just i wanted to ask also like um so what are your future plans though because i know you're doing your thing right now but maybe mm-hmm. like you have a bigger vision for the future oh yeah a, a lot um i I hope to uh, finish a few different poetry books. I have a couple done right now. I want to um, start a collection of oracle decks. And what are those? An oracle deck is it's similar to tarot, um, but you make up your own rules, and it's kind of it's a, a sort of divination or self communication where you yeah. pull a card and it gives you advice or a task that can help add to you your life in that moment. Yeah. Um, big daydream is that I really just want to impact as many people as I can and empower them to feel the things that they need to feel so they can heal in a way that makes their life better um and in the ways that that comes about I have no idea but hopefully my poetry and my work and my presence can help a couple people and I think that's the most important thing good Mm -hmm. um I'm pretty sure that's all I had um of all the stuff I wanted to ask yeah (laughs) <laughs> but yeah that's really good man i appreciate any any comments you want anything you want to tell me um no man nah. yeah <laughs> i don't know i uh nah, just thank, thank you man <laughs> i don't know like, thank <laughs> you so much for having me this is my my first nah, time nah, doing good. anything like this it was super fun um yeah yeah no of course like i said we're here we're here we just we just i just moved here mm-hmm. you know coming from europe it's kind of like you know a trip being back in the states but it's like i'm just everything feels new to me especially being in reno that must be exciting it totally is and overwhelming but... yeah because robbie's like my my good friend here and i i literally came back because he lives here uh-huh. and like he's the only reliable person i know in the states yeah. so i have to that's i have probably, to work in it, yeah yeah and we're just trying to manifest something over here over time it's 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 more the idea of just like us being together and doing things because yeah. I'm trying to pivot myself again to figure out like what, what exactly direction we're going now, you know, yeah. which is why we're trying different things such as this, yeah, you yeah, know, totally. trying to find the answers and it's not easy, but it's becoming easier when we have more information like this. <laughs> totally, totally. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Crystal, very much. Thank you. And uh, this is Reality Abuser.